Thank you. Okay. So I'll quickly start sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. And let me know once you see my screen. Yes, Mitch. All right. And uh, so this is the community uh, page that where you might have registered for this event. If not, if you receive this link uh, from external sources or from your references, feel free to uh, uh, join this Delhi NCR uh, chapter on your path community. You can navigate to uh, the URL which is mentioned in here. And uh, you can also scan this QR code to join the WhatsApp channel or WhatsApp group that we have uh, for a Delhi NCR region. Where, so it's not just limited to Delhi NCR. If you are from any other region as well, you can, you can simply uh, join this uh, group. You can scan this and uh, be a part of the the community on WhatsApp as well, where we keep updating uh, uh, any recent updates or webinars that keep on happening or any in-person meetup that happens, right? Uh, going to the session. So today's session, uh, so this is a part three of, uh, of eight uh, virtual uh, workshops that we are going to have on UiPath AI, AI ML and AI Center. Uh, specifically, uh, we will be covering different models and what are the use cases, how to, how to use those ML models that are available on AI Center. So today's uh, agenda will be to cover uh, UiPath language analysis model. So there are different ML models that are available uh, for language analysis. So the, we'll cover all of them. Uh, we'll go through them, uh, what are those models and how to use it. We'll have a demo as well for most of these ML models. And feel free to uh, share your questions and queries that you might have during the session on the chat. And we'll try to answer your queries and uh, at the end of the session or uh, uh, during the session as well. All right, uh, talking about today's speaker. So myself, Umesh Dutt Sharma, and I'm working with the Silicon Partners uh, as a capacity of RPA Tech Lead. And uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn uh, on the provided uh, uh, URL. We will also be sharing these uh, links uh, to connect with the speakers on on a chat, so that you can uh, you can connect to the speakers if you have any questions or any suggestion that you would like to incorporate, or if you want to if you have any uh, any query, right, you can directly reach out to them on LinkedIn as well. So feel free to connect with the uh, speakers uh, on the provided uh, LinkedIn uh, profiles. You can also share your uh, LinkedIn profile so that you can connect with the other team uh, community members as well. Moving forward uh, about today's agenda. Uh, so the today's agenda will cover uh, an overview about UiPath language analysis model. We'll uh, have uh, a quick introduction about uh, UiPath language analysis models and what are those models, how to use them, right? Uh, we'll go in depth as well. And then we'll also cover the use case development and what other use cases for each uh, ML model that is there and how to implement them, right? The model integration with UiPath Studio. So uh, we will also be uh, using, we will, we, will, we will be creating ML skill for most of these ML models. And then we'll incorporate and use those ML skills in the UiPath Studio where we will be showing how to integrate it and then how you can use it uh, in the in the in the further workflows uh, within your bot or within your uh, studio environment. And then at last we will have a Q and A session uh, where we will be discussing on the questions and answers from the chat. And you can also have you can also speak up or you can also ask questions to the speakers or any other community members that uh, is aware of those answers. So we'll we'll be open uh, for Q and A at the end of the session. All right, so, so to begin with, a quick introduction about UiPath language analysis models. 
So the language analysis models are uh, the ML models, which are available on your path AI center, right? So these are some of the ML models, uh, which are specifically focused on language analysis. And what it does is basically is process, it, it interprets, it uh, extracts the meaning, meaningful information from the unstructured text data. So, uh, and, and these models can be used to automate uh, the tasks uh, that uh, we usually do in any business process where we might have to uh, get some intent or maybe some context or sentiment out of uh, a text, right? And the text can be of any form. It can either be in an email or a chat, and any logs, any document, any tickets, or any reviews that you might see on websites. So any data that is available on text, any unstructured data can be used, can be injected in these ML models. And then we can train these ML models for those specific data sets. And then we can interpret and extract some information uh, based on the training that we have done and based on the model that we are using, right? So, so, so these are the language analysis models uh, and what it what they do, right? So majorly, uh, so UiPath provide five major uh, language analysis models. Uh, you can see uh, the multilingual text classification. So this is. Uh, something which supports text classification of 100 plus uh, Wikipedia languages that are listed on the provided URL. We will see that, what are those 100 languages. And then, uh, so this is similar to the English, uh, English uh, text classification model that we already have. So we'll cover that as well. But this specific model can cover uh, 100 uh, plus languages uh, for classification or data extraction. Uh, next is multi-label text classification. So, so this is currently in preview. This is currently in uh, public preview, but uh, we'll see how to use it. What, uh, what are the use cases of uh, multi-label text classification? How it differs with uh, the other text classification model that we have, which is light text classification, right? So for text classification, we have three uh, major models, which is multilingual, multi-label text, and light text classification. And UiPath keep updating these ML models uh, um, um, with the time based on the advancements and recent, uh, I mean, uh, after, after the inclusion of generative AI, right? Uh, so these model needs to some updation because generative AI is so strong that it it is it can replace some of these ML models uh, where the training might not be required, right? So the, the advancements uh, keep on happening happening on these ML models, and you will see uh, a lot of updates happening recently. So custom named entity recognition. So this is again, uh, it was already there uh, on the uh, UiPath AI Center, but now uh, there is another. Uh, so this custom means we can provide, we can have our own data set to train on the named entity recognition uh, ML model. So earlier we only had named entity recognition. Now uh, we also have custom named entity where we can also train it on our own data set. Earlier it was uh, pre-trained, so the training was not possible. We will see that as well. And there is already a, a lot of content available on UiPath community and forums and YouTube. So we will be sharing quick links to where you can have a look at uh, the previous webinars that happened on custom named entity recognition and uh, named entity recognition previously. So we will not be deep diving into much on this one because it is already covered and it's quite a famous uh, ML model uh, in language analysis. So we will not be focusing more on this, but the rest of the uh, ML models that you see are uh, have not been covered and these are still in public preview. So we will be covering uh, the other ML models and we will be deep diving into what are the use cases and how to use them uh, uh, in real life uh, scenarios. So next is semantic similarity. Right? So this ML model is basically used to uh, compare between two uh, or maybe uh, more than two strings. Uh, so you need to provide a string and then uh, a text basically. And then it will provide a similarity uh, uh, on the array of string that you need to provide as a part of input, and it will uh, it will sort it in the order having uh, the the most similar uh, text at the top. So this is again a kind of I would say string matching. 
uh, so wherever you need to do some string manipulation or string matching, right? So there are a lot of algorithms already available in the market, which can do this stuff, but that are not stable. But if you have any specific data set that you need to train on, you can simply use this ML model to train it and then um, you can use it, right? Uh, so moving uh, forward, Starting with UiPath custom named entity recognition. Um, so like I said, this is uh, quite a famous uh, ML model, which uh, where a lot of use cases are already there and a lot of content is already available on webinars on UiPath community and forums as well as on YouTube. So I'll be sharing some link uh, for you to have a look at it. But uh, just to give you an overview, uh, named entity recognition or custom named entity recognition is something which can help us to extract uh, entities uh, for which we have labeled uh, our data set, right? So data set is something which is in the form of text, right? And the and the labeled uh, uh, text can have either names, dates, products, organization names, locations, and any other uh, information that needs to be extracted, right? So, um, so custom named entity recognition model is basically something which we can train, like I said, we can have our own data set and we can train it. And earlier uh, we uh, we had named entity recognition, which was specifically, uh, which was only extracting certain uh, fields, not all the custom fields that, that might be needed for some business use cases. So that's why uh, UiPath came up with custom named entity recognition ML model. And uh, like unlike, uh, unlike the normal NER or named entity recognition model, uh, that this custom named entity recognition model allow us to train it on the domain specific data, right? So, so the 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 use case uh, it covers a lot of use cases and that's why it's quite famous uh, among business users or automation enthusiasts who uh, they can simply use it in their uh, processes uh, to extract the entities on a trained data set, right? So. <clears throat> Uh, I'll also share some links on the existing webinars that you can uh, go through. And uh, uh, this will also help you to uh, get more understanding on the custom entity, uh, uh, custom named entity recognition and the, uh, the existing named entity recognition models. So the training and evolution data set needed uh, for this specific uh, model type, which is named entity recognition, right? So CONL, uh, which is the conference on natural language learning, a uh, specific format of data is required. So uh, what the, the what CONL data or format look like, right? So basically it's, it's a way of uh, uh, organizing the data uh, using, uh, using a text or a string, I would say, where each line have uh, some set of text and the labeled or the data annotations like uh, uh, whether um, so let's maybe uh, let me just uh, give you a quick uh, I have an example to show you how the CO and LL data look like so as you can see right uh, so this is the format of CO and LL uh, data format where you see the strings or the text or sentences are have all the uh, the letters on each next line, right? Uh, and then, uh, so this B represents begin, which is the first letter. Uh, and John is a person, right? So person uh, is the annotation that we have labeled it. O is outside, which is which is not be used for training uh, or labeled. New York, New York is a is a single. Uh, it's, it's a city, right? So it's, it should be extracted as a single entity. So that's why we have B as begin uh, location for LOC. Uh, and I is for uh, inside for any subsequent, uh, I would say subsequent uh, iteration of uh, that entity. It needs to be uh, labeled with I and again location. Similarly, I mean, uh, for all the sentences that needs to be labeled, right? So. Uh, this is how the CO and LL uh, data format look like. And uh, there are different, um, uh, different uh, I would say, uh, 
tools that are available in the market to create uh, uh, such format and uh, label studio is one of them so label studio is a open source uh, platform where you can uh, label uh, such data sets and create uh, uh, CUNLL uh, format data as well for for the training of uh, custom named entity recognition models right uh, and feel free to share your questions any doubts that you might have if we are going too fast and if we are skipping something if you think uh, we need to discuss something before moving forward feel free to post your questions on chat right um so like i said uh, this ml package must be retrained because it's a custom named entity recognition model so training is required if we that's why uh, it's custom, right? Uh, if the training is not required, we already have named entity recognition where the training is not required. So that that's about uh, it on this model. Uh, the next model that we have is your path light text classification ML model, right? So before covering this, before starting this, I would like to show you uh, how, how we can create an ML. Uh, I think we already covered it in the previous sessions. But uh, just for the sake of uh, uh, demo or uh, just to give you a quick walkthrough how to create a project. So you can just simply go to AI Center, right, from here. And then once you come here, you can create a project. And you can name it anything. So uh, I, I have already created a project for language analysis right, for uh, today's session. So it is, it is just about providing the name, nothing else. And you can also restrict the access if you don't want anyone else to have the access. Or you can have the access later on as well in here in the settings tab. Right. So this is the project that I've created uh, uh, long back. But I think in today's session, we will be using this uh, to have to, to cover the different ML models that are there that were added by UiPath recently. Right. So once you create the project, you will land on the dashboard page. And under ML packages, you can see the different ML models that are available. So we already covered uh, what how we can upload a, a zip file where if you already have an ML package available with us. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to export some ML models from a different uh, tenant, you can use this option. And then since you, we are in the current tenant, we don't want to we simply want to use the existing ML models that are available. You can click on the out-of-the-box packages. And then you have two types of categories. One is UiPath, other is the open source packages. So we have language analysis model for UiPath as well as for open source packages, right? So today's, today we'll be focusing on the UiPath language analysis model, as well as we will cover some part of the open source package, which are already covered by a lot of uh, uh, chapters on UiPath community. So we'll be focusing more on this. And then we will also have some demo of uh, normal or open source language uh, analysis models. Right. So when I click on this, so you will see the, the five ML models that we just discussed at the beginning. Right. Um, and uh, the next that we have is light text classification. So I have already created a ML package for this. If you see in the ML package, I already have a light text classification ML model. And I have ran the pipeline for this. And I already have ML skill for this. So I'll show you what are the steps. I think we covered uh, some of these steps. How do we create a pipeline? How do we create an ML skill? What data set format uh, should be for uh, any specific ML model, right? So we'll cover that now. So just wanted to give you an overview that these are the different ML models that we have, and we will be uh, covering these in this session. So, okay. Coming back to the text light text classification model. So this is again a text classification model. So like I said, we have three different models for text classification. This is, this is, this is the very generic model, ML model, which is available. And it supports Latin characters. Uh, which means it can support English, French, Spanish, and other uh, languages which have uh, Latin characters, right? <clears throat> and how it works is, so uh, as a part of data set, we need to provide um, either a JSON or a CSV file where the text that needs to be trained and the label that needs to be uh, mapped with the text is 
uh, formatted something like this. Uh, so this is uh, what you can have a, maybe a CSV file to create this, or you can have the same format in JSON as well. And you can just simply have this data, data set uploaded on the data set folder on ES Enter and then train the ML model. So the, what are the uh, use of, uh, what, what is the use of using this ML model, right? So like the name suggests, it's a light text classification model. So the data itself is very light, I would say, and uh, it support uh, the Latin characters, right? Uh, some of the languages. So you can have different languages or uh, text uh, data on the single data set. You can have French, Spanish, and English, all the different text or from different languages in a single data set. So that way you don't have to create a different ML skill for each language. You can have it in a single data set. And uh, since, so two uh, columns are needed. First is text and label for training purpose. We'll cover that, how it looks like. And once we complete the training, right? So when we run the uh, process, when we run the ML skill or when we use the ML skill, the output that we receive is generally uh, like this where we have the class, class is nothing but what we have in the label section. Uh, and then uh, the confidence score and the n-grams uh, as an array. So what is n-gram, right? So n-gram is nothing but uh, it's again a way of uh, uh, breaking down uh, the text into uh, a smaller pieces uh, called grams. So let's suppose uh, the text that we have provided is, uh, I like this movie. So it has, uh, it has break down the text into like like and like this. And it also provided uh, uh, some confidence score or something. So basically it break down the, the entities which are already there, right? So this is how it works basically. And this n-grams is an optional. So we can also disable it uh, while doing the pipeline run. And let me just show you how to do this and how the data set look like. So this is what uh, the text classification, uh, light text classification data look like. You can have uh, any text and you can la uh, label it here. It, it's not that you need to provide the numbers. You can have something else as well. You can have any category or uh, any specific uh, label that you want to do, right? You can have it here. So this is what the data set look like. And when we talk about the data upload. So you just need to create a, create a folder and then upload the CSV file uh, in the data set folder once you have the data. And the package is already created, right? When, when, when you create the package. Now the next step is to run the pipeline. And to run the pipeline, uh, I would suggest that the GPU is not required because it's very smaller data set. So what you can do is you can just simply uh, maybe run the train pipeline. Uh, choose the package which is there. The package major version has to be the one which is the most updated one. And the minor version should always be the one which is the lowest version, uh, just to train on the base model. Uh, the input data set that we have is in this folder. We will we'll be selecting the folder where the file is residing. Right. So the fi our file is in this folder, we'll select this. And these are some of the parameters that needs to be passed. So you see the input column name, and the target column name. So the first one is uh, the text and the other one is the uh, labels that we have added in the input sheet that I just showed. And then input format is not from the yes enter. So it's, this is, uh, I'll just configure it and then so we, so we need to change it based on the data that we have on the data set that we have. And then we have labels. Data set is actually auto. So since this is not coming from a center, we have this in the form of CSV. And you see this hyperparameter search enable. So this is what actually enables, <coughs> sorry, the, uh, the, the n-grams option that you see. If you disable this, it will simply disable the n-grams. You will not have the n-grams uh, in the prediction, in the response of ML skill. If you keep it enabled, you will receive the n-grams as well. So this is optional. 
right and once you uh, update this you can so enable gpu gpu is not required because gpu is only required where we have, you have a large data set and you have a lot of images on ocr uh, happening uh, in the pipeline right so i would suggest since it is a very uh, smaller data set based on a text and csv you can skip the gpu part and um, it will be all done so as, as you can see um, here is the pipeline that i created uh, today itself and it shows a successful it hardly took to 32 seconds which is close to uh, four minutes or so right uh, so once the pipeline is run we can create an ml skill so how to create an ml skill is once the pipeline is completed you can provide the name right uh, so like text classification so here you need to select the updated version so once you run the pipeline you will have a uh, updated version of a uh, minor version updated on the ML, uh, ML package that you have created. I'll show you that. So you always select the updated version once the pipeline is completed and uh, you can select uh, the inactivity period and everything else. And then once you create it, an ML skill will be created. But just uh, make sure that uh, you are creating ML skill based on the requirement. You are creating the replicas. That, uh, so if you create a replica, it will consume AI, AI units as well. Uh, if you enable the GPU, it will consume uh, more AI units, right? Since it's a very lightweight or a very uh, uh, ML, ML skill with a very min minimum training data set and all. So I have kept everything to the minimum so that uh, the AI units are consumed uh, uh, very less, right? So since we have this already, I uh, will cover all the demos uh, once we cover the ML, uh, all the ML skills and how, how to create it, what are the use cases. We'll have a demo at the end of the session. Um, so this is about light, uh, light text classification. Coming to the other, uh, the next. Uh, so before going this, let's see what are the use cases of having this, right? So the light text classification ML models uh, can uh, be used for topic categorization. So uh, where you can categorize any articles or blogs or any news stories into predefined topics. So let's suppose if you have any text uh, which is there and then you can create a label for sports, politics or technology. And then uh, whenever you run this ML skill uh, on any of the text that is available, right? It will uh, provide you whether it belongs to a sports category or politics or technology uh, based on the labeling that you have provided. And then you can use that uh, the text or any information further down uh, on the downstream process in your bot, right? So that's how you can use this for topic categorization. You can also use it in customer support for classifying the support tickets, uh, which department this uh, request should route to, right? because based on the text that is there uh, and the training that we have provided that this, the, the, this specific issue should be routed to the IT department or a finance department or something else. You can have the data labeling done and then you can uh, use this updated ML scale for, for this specific use case where you will get the appropriate department and then you can just simply route that request to the department. You don't have to uh, uh, basically, uh, you can leverage this particular ML model basically for this use case. Content moderation is the other use case where you can just simply uh, check whether uh, the content that is posted is inappropriate or harmful. Uh, you can uh, you can have this labeled as inappropriate, harmful, uh, harmful or uh, okay or something. Uh, based on the text that are there and uh, that can also help you to uh, analyze uh, or using the text classification model so these are some of the use cases uh, which are there moving to the next slide which is multilingual text classification ml model so like i said uh, we already have text classification uh, model for english language uh, as a pass part of open source i'll show you that as well before moving to this one so ML packages, out of the box packages. So in language analysis for UiPath, we have multilingual text classification. And then we also have uh, open source packages for language analysis. And then we have English text classification and Japanese text classification, right? 
So since uh, we have a multilingual one, it's better to use this that because you can have um, any number, any uh, out of hundred top languages, you can have uh, a data set for different set of languages, and you can also extend it further uh, if you want to incorporate any other languages as well. And if you are if you are stick to one language uh, text classification, you can simply go ahead and use this one. All right. So since we will be covering multilingual text classification. So let's see uh, what it does. So, so similar to the light uh, text classification model, right? So this model supports multilingual data sets. So you can have, uh, so there are around 100 plus languages which are supported. For this, you can have a similar set of data like what we did uh, covered in the previous data set or uh, data uh, model. Uh, the, but, but the best part uh, in here is the if you see the features, right, which is there for this multilingual text, uh, text classification model is we don't need to maintain any separate data set for each language. We can have one single data set, one single ML skill for all the data, uh, all the languages. And the same categories can be applied across languages. As you can see in the screenshot, uh, we have uh, the languages, uh, we have two languages in here. And then the category can be applied to um, any any uh, text or any language. So the same category can be used right, to segregate or uh, get the intent out of it. Uh, the second is uh, uh, training a single model saves the time and simplifies deployment. So that, that's yes, because you'll only have one single ML skill. You don't have to deploy a lot of ML skills and then maintain it. And then you can also add new languages easily to the data set and then train it again. So you already have the data set. If any new language comes, you can just simply append that and uh, use the data set for further training. Um, a key consideration is whenever you have any languages uh, which supports UTF-8, right? Uh, you need to have, uh, you need to basically sub save or create a CSV file uh, using UTF-8. If you won't, it will not save the format of the languages and you won't, you will lose the data. Right? I'll show you that how it's done and so that you don't lose the data next time you create a similar data set. The use case is again uh, sentiment analysis because uh, it can help you uh, know whether the intent of the text is whether positive or negative and it can have any language out of those hundred. We'll see that. Uh, similarly, intent recognition, identifying uh, whether the customer support interaction chatbot or virtual assistant, whether it's going, uh, what are the intent of uh, uh, the interaction that is happening between the customer support and the uh, the customer, right? Um, document classification is again one of the category where we can use uh, multilingual uh, text classification ML model. So I'll show you what I was talking about when I said saving it in the UTF-8 format. So here we have the multilingual sentiment uh, data set. This is the multilingual one and here it is. As you can see, I have the data available in uh, different languages, right? Uh, uh, we have Marathi, Punjabi, Tamil, Urdu, uh, Malayalam, English, and all of that. So I have this data set, right? I can use this data set to train this multilingual text classification model. And uh, as you can see, the label that I have done is positive and negative. That means it's it will give me uh, a sentiment of the, the text that I will be providing based on the maybe the reviews that I have. So any company that might have reviews on different languages, they can just simply uh, train this ML model and then use to know whether the reviews that we have provided on different languages are either, either positive or negative, right? And you can, you can have different use cases for this. But if I simply save this in the form of CSV, right, I will lose the data format. If I save it as CSV, right? Simply CSV, it, you will lose the data. So it's better it's always recommended to use uh, UTF format so that the data remains there. The remain the, the data format do not lose. Right. If I open the the one that I just created, you will lose the data. So it is always recommended to 
save it in the UTF format, right? You see, all the data is gone. So this is just a recommendation that I thought I think we should be sharing with you. So ensure that the text encoding is correct. Otherwise, you will lose the data. So we'll see a quick demo of this one as well. And then at the last of this uh, slides, the next that, that we have is multi-label text classification ML model. Right. Uh, so this is again uh, a text classification model, but the only uh, added advantage of this is we can have multi labels uh, within a text or sentence, multiple labels. So I'll show you a data set, I think, and that way you will be able to relate to this. Uh, the existing data sets that we covered or ML models that we covered were only having single label. Right, either positive, positive text, uh, negative, or something like that. But here you can see uh, in the text uh, that we have, the labels that we have can have positive, negative, or just positive or negative as well. Right? I love this actor, but I hate his, his, uh, his movies. So it contains two uh, sentiments, positive and as well as negative. But if you use the normal sentiment analysis or the normal or the other models that we just discussed, you will not get both the labels or both the intents. Right. So that's why uh, that is where this multi-label uh, text classification model can be used if you want to have multiple uh, categories or labels defined uh, within a text or a string. Right. And that is where, so th again, the format is same. It uh, contains the text and labels and the data is almost the same, but the label uh, has to have a multiple uh, categories, I would say, or labeling. Uh, for the training, and then you can use it once uh, once you upload the data set to AI Center and then train the pipeline. Right. Um, so, this is how the data looks like as uh, the output, I would say, where we can have the labels as deliver or payment when the string or the text that we have uh, is, let's suppose it says something about delivery and payment, it can label that, uh, that this particular. Uh, text is uh, has some intent about delivery and payment, right? And that way we can route that text or request uh, to the particular workflow in the bot. And we can also get we also get the confidence in the next uh, uh, block of the JSON uh, as a response. So this is the only uh, difference uh, with the existing ones. And uh, again. Uh, so for this one, GPU is recommended. I'll show you uh, when I when I created uh, the ML scale, I enabled the GPU for this one. If you see, right, GPU is enabled for multi-label text classification because the data set becomes a little large uh, than the as compared to the other ones. So it's, it is recommended to enable GPU to save some time uh, for training as well as for ML scale as well. Moving to the next uh, ML model, which is semantic similarity. So, like I said, this is in currently in public preview, but uh, it's very useful when we want to uh, do a string comparison or a text comparison, and then see which one is matching the most. And that is where we can use this. So we already have some uh, algorithms available for string matching, right? Uh, which we, uh, if uh, if you see a uh, uh, string distance matching or something, some other uh, algorithms including Levenshint and all. So. You can use that as well, but uh, like I said, it's not uh, that robust, but having an ML model for such uh, uh, capability is definitely a plus. So you can use this uh, based on the data set. Uh, for, you can test it basically how it's working on your data set and then you can just simply use it. So we don't need to train this particular ML model because it is already trained, but you can have your data set and then check how it's working and how what are the output that you're receiving or uh, whether it's good to use it or not, but uh, I think it's it's always recommended to use this one because it's trained already trained on a lot of data sets, right? Um, so what does the input and output look like for this one? Uh, so the input is a reference where we will have one unique string, and then the candidates are also needs to be passed in the input string where we have uh, some set of similar string uh, or similar uh, text or maybe some uh, different text and then in response we will have uh, what 
particular text out of the candidates is matching the most uh, we'll have this in the descending order so this is how the output look like and since I, like i said it's not we don't need to train it so we don't need to uh, any data set basically for training we can just simply use as it is i'll show you how to do this uh, in some time so the different use cases uh, as you can see uh, identifying redundant entries so this is one of the great example where we can uh, check uh, uh, any uh, any entries uh, where the, the which, which are similar in nature and we can categorize and uh, merge them in the database to have a clean and efficient data management right and the other use case is cross language similarity so um, accessing a similar uh, similarity between text in different languages uh, or facilitating understanding uh, across diverse linguistic context so basically since it uh, uh, supports uh, different languages as well so you can use this for cross language similarity as well so what are the different texts between different languages uh, customer support query matching again i think this is uh, one of the area where uh, text classification models are greatly used and uh, one of the use case could be for semantic similarities automatically match customer inquiries with existing solution faqs so because uh, whenever you have any faqs uh, the bot or uh, any chatbot will recommend any existing faqs or solutions that might be there present on the portal or uh, so that uh, it saves a lot of time on uh, the customer side as well as on the customer support side as well, right? Uh, so this ML model can uh, find the similarity between the candidates uh, based on the reference one. So let me just show you that how to differentiate whether it's trainable or not. So when I go to this, uh, as you can see, it's non-retrainable. So that means we don't need to train this. We don't need any data set to train this. But for others, we need to provide a data set for training and then only we can use it. Otherwise, you cannot be able to use it without uh, training. right? And that is where we need to create an Excel file or a JSON file and then upload it to data, data sets. Uh, do the data labeling if required, run the pipeline and then everything else is needed. But if it is non-retrainable, right? you can just simply go ahead and create an ML skill uh, for that ML model. No pipeline is required no training is required right so uh, that's about all the ml models that are available from uipath we'll quickly go through the other ml models as well which are for open source under language analysis and then we'll quickly jump to the demo right so english english uh, text classification and japanese text classification are similar to the multilingual one that we just saw uh, the only difference is this is specific to english and japanese uh, so we don't need to if you see right so this is retrainable and the japanese is also retrainable that means you need to provide your data set in order to train this uh, these two uh, ml models uh, the other ml models that we have is language detection uh, sentiment analysis this will be already covered uh, i already shared uh, some of the urls where you can have a look at it but language detection this is non retrainable that means we don't need to provide any data set in order to use this ml model Similarly, for sentiment analysis, this is also non-retrainable. Uh, named entity recognition is also non-retrainable because we have a newer version of this uh, named entity recognition, uh, which is known as custom named entity recognition ML model uh, under UiPath provided packages over here. All right, and this is where you can provide your own data set for named entity recognition. All right, uh, let's switch to the demo then. I'll show you uh, what ML skills I already have. Uh, so uh, language detection, sentiment analysis, uh, multi-level text classification, text classification, and multilingual. Right? So we'll be using all of these. But the cache here is, so these all are available in the single project, right? And I also have one more ML skill, which is there in the other project, or it can be in any other tenant as well, which is semantic similarity, right? So I have this one ML skill uh, as a separate, and let's suppose uh, someone else uh, have this ML skill, or maybe on a different tenant, uh, not in this one, but maybe in a different tenant or uh, on any, any other organization. So how to, how we can access 
uh, ML skill outside of the current tenant. Uh, I'll show you that as well. So, right. So for this, basically, uh, you just need to create uh, or modify the current deployment and then enable this ML, make ML skill public. It won't be exposed uh, directly. Uh, you will still need to have uh, the API key and URL shared with the uh, end user, and then only they will be able to access this. So, and you can also change this API key uh, as and when required. So it's it's not like whenever you make it public, it will be open for all. You will still have to provide API key and URL to access this, right? And uh, this is where uh, you can see uh, uh, in the demo, we will be using or uh, leveraging uh, some of these ML skills that we just discussed and what are the use of how, how the extraction part look like. So we'll be starting with semantic similarity. Let's start with this only. So as you can see, uh, I already have the data set for uh, data extraction. So since uh, semantic similarity don't need to be, uh, uh, we don't need to train anything. I just simply created an ML package for semantic similarity. No pipelines because it's non-retrainable. I simply created an ML skill like this. Uh, I just named it, I provided the name, major or minor version. The base version always, will always be zero because it's not retrainable. It will always be zero for all the non-retrainable ML models. And then just simply create it and then you can just simply use it. Nothing is required for non-retrainable ML models. So as you can see, I have uh, some data in the CSV format and then I'm converting it into a JSON format because it the the data has to be provided in the JSON format for this. Once I provide this, I'll have a response uh, whether uh, in a, whether the string that we have is uh, similar in nature and then we'll have it in the uh, descending order. I'll just simply run it. I'll close all the Excel files. So I have provided the ML skill uh, URL and the API key. I'm not using the robot connection. I'm using the endpoint one. And that is where you can also uh, make your ML skill public and then use it anywhere in your code, uh, irrespective whether you're connected with the current intent or not, right? And then as you can see, uh, so this is the reference that is there, uh, this is the input. And when I print the output, I can see uh, the candidate. Uh, so basically the reference was, I love sunny days because they boost my mood and the candidates. And now in the response, I have received a, a sorted uh, candidate that the sunny days improve my mood significantly, it has the highest confidence, uh, highest score, which is 83%. And the other candidates that I have in the list are something like I enjoy cloudy weather sometimes. And the last is rainy days make me feel low, which has the lowest confidence score. So it automatically uh, sorts the candidates and then you can use it anywhere in your workflow if you have uh, if you want to check the similarity semantic similarity uh, uh, in a reference and candidates uh, text right um, um, and I think we already covered how to use ml skill in the previous session if not I'll again uh, show you how what is needed in order to use the ml skill that you have created in uh, AI center so you need to have this uipath.ml.services activities installed as a part of uh, uh, under managed packages. You can just simply install it, right, this one. And once you install this, you will have ML skill activity available and then you can just simply drag and drop. There's no scope needed. And then you can just start using it uh, in your workflows. So JSON response that you receive can be used further uh, down the line in the process. And you can use um, uh, deserialized JSON to extract the information from JSON. And for that, you need to have another uh, ML package, which is a web API. Language detection, as you can see, it is again one of the ML skill that is already created there. Uh, uh, language detection, again, do not need any data set. It's non-retrainable. So we can just simply create it and then start using it in the workflows. Uh, we can provide the language over here and it can help us uh, identify which language it is. So let's see if it can identify 
maybe. I don't know. Marathi? Let's try with Marathi. So the ML skill is already created, right? We can just simply use it in our workflows uh, as and when needed. So it's very easy to use it in the workflows. And uh, it does. it's not that difficult uh, to use uh, the non-retrainable model. As you can see, the response is already there and it's Marathi. Right? And let's see the confidence score as well. So confidence is one. So the bot is able to identify the language uh, and it's Marathi and confidence is one. And similarly, we can use this ML model or ML skill to detect the language. And these are all language analysis model, right? As you can see, without whatever we're covering. The light text classification again. Uh, so this is where we needed to provide a data set, which I just showed. Right? And it can have uh, n-grams as well for, let me just show you. So I disabled the n-grams option because it was optional. Uh, and that is available in the next, uh, or the other project that we were discussing there. ML skill, we have a uh, light text classification, right? In the pipeline, if you see uh, the training one, so the, in the parameters, uh, uh, this is set as false. Search enable, so this is for n-grams, and this is false. So that's why we will not have n-grams as a part of a response, but we'll still have uh, the response uh, based on the class, basically, uh, or the label that we provided in the input sheet. And it has provided class zero based on the input sheet that we have provided. So class is nothing but I would say a rating or category that we have provided in the in the, in the data labeling set for like text class indication. Right. So labeling right. So this is where we have provided basically. Uh, so this is nothing but the class that we receive it. Okay. Uh, next is. How is the sentiment analysis? Uh, so this is again non-retrainable. We can just simply use it. And whatever text that you will provide, you will have the uh, sentiment either positive, negative, or, or we can have neutral as well. And like I said, I have provided, I would recommend it as a, as a text string for all the, for mostly, for most of the ML skills, uh, just to see how it is, how the response is different for uh, different ML skills whether it's trainable or non-retrainable. For sentiment analysis, I think, uh, so we should be having positive uh, as a intent or sentiment for this one, and the confidence is 92%, right? Uh, similarly, uh, I think we have uh, multi-label and multilingual as well. So let's check that. <clears throat> so for multi-label, like I said, uh, we need to provide uh, data in this format where we have to label, uh, provide multiple labels, uh, right? So, so let's suppose uh, maybe this, the plot was amazing, but the acting was dull. So it has a positive and negative uh, sentiment. So let's see uh, what is the response uh, for this one. So it should have both the labels as output, uh, including positive and uh, ne uh, negative. But if we use only the sentiment analysis one, we will only have uh, maybe positive or negative, not both, or maybe a neutral one. But we will not, ha not have uh, both the labels. right? For so In this case, as you can see, we have negative and positive, both the labels in here along with the confidence. The confidence is also high. But if I use the same text in sentiment analysis, I might not have both the labels because it can either provide, uh, it can provide any one of the three, which is positive, negative, or neutral. So let's see what do we what we get for this but for, for this particular text.
So based on the use case uh, that you have, uh, we can use any of these ML models. So as you can see, it has provided the sentiment as negative, but it also have a positive sentiment which says the plot was amazing, right? So that's why we have a multi-label uh, text classification. We can use it for different use cases. So this is one of the use cases that uh, can provide a sentiment, uh, multiple sentiments uh, in, in one uh, string or text. Um, uh, I think let's see if any it had a nice concept but poor execution of the strong narrative. So this one, right? So this has uh, a positive intent, right? So it should only return one in uh one sentiment which is positive because if there's nothing negative in this particular string or a review or I would say a feedback. Though we have labeled it uh, in a multiple multi label text classification model, but the output is only positive because that's how we have created the data label uh, or we have labeled it that uh, something like this should always be positive. There should not be any negative intent, right? So based on the data set you provide, you can have this uh, uh, created uh, as per the use case. Uh, the next one that we have in the list is I think multilingual, uh, and that is where uh, we can provide uh, any text in the supported languages out of 100 and it can provide us the response based on the training that we so for suppose for this one uh, let's see what data that we have multilingual so we have positive or negative uh, as a sentiment right so we can provide uh, or we can have any other data set uh, for this one we are using positive or negative so whatever language that we use, I don't know I mean, what's written uh, in some of these other languages, but the intent is showed as positive or negative. And based on that, we will, uh, if we write a similar text or something, we'll have a uh, intent or sentiment uh, irrespective of the language that is there because we have trained that ML model for these particular ML skills or for this particular data set. So as you can see, uh, for this one, it says negative. I'm not very sure what's there, but I think it's something negative. And to check this, you can also translate this into English or Hindi or any other language just to see what it says. And then um, you will be able to see that, yeah, this is definitely negative. And uh, that's how you can, uh, without translating it, any other language, you can just uh, use multilingual text classification for uh, extracting the entities or labels uh, from the ML skills. Right? So that's about all the uh, ML skills that are available or ML models that are available as a part of uh, language analysis model. I hope you really liked it and uh, got uh, a good understanding of what are the different ML models that are available and how to use them. I think we are over time already. So I'll quickly uh, come to the chat or any questions that you might have. So, okay, so I think uh, Durvish is requesting for the light text uh, data set Excel file. Uh, sure, Durvish, I'll share all the data files that I have. Uh, you can uh, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'll share all the uh, data set file that I have for uh, different ML models. Well, I have also a uh, data set for uh, named entity recognition. If you need, I can share that as well. So, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'll be I'll share the, those zip files with you. Any other questions from the members? All right. So use cases like I shared. Right? So use cases that I shared uh, are for each ML model. So these are all practical ML models, uh, uh, use cases. Uh, but depending on, uh, I mean, if you want to have a demo, a demonstration of a practical use case, that is something we can cover. But I think that would need a dedicated session because we cannot cover all the ML models and all the uh, use cases in a single session. So I would suggest uh, maybe we can have a separate session where we can cover any business use case in one particular session for one particular ML model end to end so that it gives you a better idea how to implement this in a real world uh, scenario. Because in current uh, session, in today's session, that because we had a lot of uh, language analysis models, right? It's not uh, difficult. It's really difficult to 
uh, cover all of that in single session and along with uh, a real world use case, right? So that's why. But thank you for your feedback. I definitely will will try to have a maybe a series dedicated for uh, real world use cases. I think that will be really helpful for community members. Thank you for your input. Any other questions from uh, anyone? If not, uh, we'll...